it's hard to say the the name Ronda Rousey and not have it followed up by Chris Cyborg. Okay, I know. In her in her world, how much of her day is even spent? We don't talk about Cyborg at all. Why would we? You know, we don't talk about Chris Weidman. It, it's a different athlete in a different weight class. Why are we going to talk about athletes in other weight classes? Now, unfortunately, Chris Cyborg and her team, they're the ones that keep mentioning Ronda. The only time Ronda mentions Cyborg is when the media lobs, conver- lobs questions at her. And I've seen her, and, and John has probably seen it also, she doesn't want to have these conversations. She doesn't want to give that name any more validity than she has to because this is an athlete in another weight class that keeps calling her, calling her up, calling her up, calling her up. Why would the reigning world champion at 135 pounds move up? And this is something that every media member and every blogger and every forum user and every fan of MMA should consider. Ronda Rousey has not weighed above 151 pounds for the last four months. She hasn't weighed above 154 for the last six months. This is off-season. This is in-season. The last two and a half weeks before this fight, Ronda was waking up every morning at 148 pounds. Chris Cyborg recently tweeted a photo of herself jacked and ripped at 175 pounds. So we're talking about a 24-pound differential in body weight first thing in the morning. 24 pounds of body mass. Why the hell would Ronda give up that type of advantage to an athlete who's in excess of 20 pounds heavier when George St. Pierre wouldn't do that versus Anderson Silva? And there was only 20 pounds between George and Anderson. George was walking around in the high 190s. Anderson was walking walking around in the low two teens. George said, hey, I'm going to have to take a year to put on the amount of muscle in order to compete successfully at that weight class. And Anderson said, no, I'm not going to drop it too much for me. In five, ten years, if it doesn't happen, we'll we'll – We'll be bummed out about it, you know. And um, but whose fault is it if it doesn't happen? Well, they only have a 135 pound division, so if that's the only one they'll promote it at, then whose fault is it? Uh, Cyborg needs to drop, and that's the point. We will take that fight right now at 135 pounds. Ronda will will weigh in this weekend and fight on Saturday night mm-hmm. at 135 pounds, and. We've been had that stance, you know, since day one, right. and it's waiting for Cyborg. And I God, I hope, you know. I have to talk about there's a little concern on Cyborg's side for me. She's actually a sweet girl. I have nothing bad to say about her. I, I, I think she's a sweet person. I don't like what they do in the media and their, their whole PR spin, which I, I don't believe it, it's all you know kind of a, a facade. But she's a sweet girl. And to see her being so large right now and making the prospect of her making 135 pounds, I right. think that there are legitimate concerns. A few years ago when I first met with her, she was in the low 160s. That's a whole different conversation than now she's in the mid-170s. So this is an athlete that's gotten bigger over the last few years while talking a bit about making 135. And that's a scary thing. And I don't think that she'll do the right things to make 135 in a healthy manner, specifically in a short – they're talking about making it in December. Well, if they can make it in December, make it in December, whether it's the UFC or Invicta, show that you can do it and look healthy doing it. And then move forward. Let's set the fight. We'll take the fight immediately. I don't think she'll ever do it without stripping down muscle. And then at that point, she, she has to strip be, down muscle. She wouldn't be cyborg. And I so. think that's why that's the hindrance, why she doesn't want to. And I understand that. 